أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assessing Model Fit IBM SPSS AMOS In this session we are going to look into how to assess model fit how to improve model fit in case you get a poor fit for your model Understanding Model Fit The researcher first specifies a model based on the theory then determines how to measure the construct collect data and then input the data into the SCM software package. So this is the whole process starting with the model building based on the theory and then adding your data into SCM software package for structural equation modeling. The package actually fits the data into the specified model and produces the results which include overall model fit statistics and parameter estimates. Now model fit is actually the feasibility of the model with the data whether your data actually fits the proposed model or not. Now there are a number of statistics or indices that one can use to assess whether your data is actually fitting the model or not. AMOS will provide you with number of different indices. But the most commonly used are these ones. Now each of these fit indices have got their own good fit or the cutoff value. For example, for chi-square, your p-value should be greater than 0.05. However, this is very sensitive to the sample size. So, if you've got a higher sample size, then there is highly likely that you won't get a good fit. The next is GFI and AGFI. GFI greater than 0.95, AGFI greater than 0.90. NFI and NNFI, both of them should be greater than 0.95. CFI greater than 0.90. RMSCA should be less than 0.08. SRMR less than 0.08. And your average variance extracted, which is a measure of convergent validity, should be greater than 0.5. Now, there are different debates on which fit indices we should use. For example, in one of the earlier lectures, I mentioned that this should be 0.90. For TLI. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use a more liberal approach towards fit indices. We are going to use 0 0.90 for CFI, for TLI, for GFI, AGFI. Moving on, how do you improve your model fit if you are not getting a good model fit? Now the first step is you have to check for your outer loadings. Now you can start by looking at loadings that are low or less than 0 0.50. Now each time you remove a particular indicator from your model based on low loadings, you should rerun and reassess your model. Next step is if you're not getting a good fit based on your loadings, the next step and a very important step is modification indices. Now there is a big debate in the literature whether one should use modification indices or not. But in my experience, I've seen papers using it to improve the model fit. I've personally used it in my papers as well. Now, how do you use modification indices? So everything that AMOS will suggest you, you won't draw covariances between those particular indicators or error terms or indicators and latent variable. You cannot draw covariance between two error terms that belong to two different constructs. So modification indices is, is all about drawing covariances. You cannot draw covariance between error terms and your latent construct. The only thing that is acceptable is drawing covariances between error terms from a similar construct. And again, you have to look into the theory as well, whether this covariance or relationship is justified or not. And finally, assess the standardized residual covariance. And this is available in the estimates section. Anything over 2 shall be considered for deletion. But it is very important that one should not go on and keep deleting items because that can affect your content validity and how you have operationalized your construct. Now improving model fit. In instances where an unobserved variable has multiple indicators, you might want to correlate the error terms if it's theoretically justifiable and help explain the variance within the construct. Now, frequently indicators within a construct are very similar to a one another. 
and there is redundancy between the indicators. Now how big does the modification indices value need to be to add another covariance? Consider any valid modification indices suggestion if the chi-square value is not changing by at least 10. Now what happens is when you draw covariances between error terms, it helps you change your chi-square value, reduce your chi-square value. A chi-square value of 10 at the expense of 1 degree of freedom is almost significant at 0.001 level. So this means that this covariance or drawing the covariance will help you improve your model fit if it is greater than 10. But normally what happens is in AMOS the minimum they have kept is 4. Now what I do normally is I look for instances where the change is extreme. It's not uncommon to have a modification suggestion greater than 20 in large models. So you will have suggestions greater than 20, even 30, 40, 50. An equal concern for multiple high modification indices within a construct is the possibility that this shared unexplained error is the result of a method bias in how the data was collected. Now, research is not a segregated attempt. Research is a systematic process whereby one step can significantly influence your other step. Now, if you have collected the data and there are issues with the data, then you won't get good results. So right from the start, right from making or developing your questionnaire, one should be very cautious of how they should collect the data at later stages. Just one example, let's say you have developed a questionnaire and you have just taken three items within your construct. Now, it's highly recommended that when you intend to use SCM, you should use or you should have at least four, five or six items in a construct because the items may be deleted because of low loadings or higher standardized residual or maybe because of cross loadings. Now another step that one can do is assess the standardized residual covariances. Now these standardized residual covariances indicate the standardized differences between the proposed covariances based on the model and the observed covariances computed based on the collected data. So it's just the difference between your proposed covariances and what you have actually observed based on your data. Now significant values of standardized covariances indicate significant differences in covariances because the proposed model based on computed covariance and observed covariances and affects the overall good fit. So if, if there is a disparity between the observed and proposed covariances, then you will have problems with your overall model fit. Although the standardized residual covariances are like modification indices. They can directly be addressed through deletion of the concerned item. If, you've, if a particular item is showing a greater or higher standardized residual covariance, you can delete the item. Therefore, the significant standardized residuals may be treated only after taking care of modification indices. So instead of directly jumping onto your standardized residual covariances, in the estimates section, you should first look into modification indices. Finally, and most importantly, look for standardized residual covariances or the estimates that are greater than two to identify particular covariances which seem associated with significant discrepancies of the given model from a perfect model. So if your standardized residual covariance for a particular item is greater than two, you might consider deleting that particular item. Now, again, you have to be very cautious. Do not delete an item which is central to your construct and can affect the content validity. Make sure you have at least three items per construct. Now, here is a process model that one can use to improve the overall model fit. The first step, you have to set up your data. Check the data for incorrect inconsistent values. Now, there is a video on the channel on how to check and correct the inconsistent values. Assess the missing values and perform data imputation. Second, build your model in AMOS. Check for low factor loadings and then you can, obviously if your model is good, there are no issues with standardized residual covariances, there are no modification issues or modification indices issues, you can directly report your measurement model. But if there are issues, then you have to look for these steps. Look for low loadings. Stepwise delete your loadings and keep rerunning your model. It's just like trial and error. Assess the modification indices and only draw covariances between error terms of a same construct. Check for standardized residual covariances that are greater than two. Delete item with high residual covariances. And finally, you report your model. Now here are two 
important books that are critical to learning Amos. Now moving on, this is the model that we built in the last session. So how do I assess this model? First of all, let's see if we've got the data file. So we click here to load the data file. And yes, we've got the data file. If, if there is no data file, just go to file name and locate your file and it will be loaded here by clicking open button. Now look at the properties, analysis properties, go to output. Yes, we need standardized estimates. Yes, we need squared multiple correlation, residual moments, modification indices. Yes, greater than four. You can increase it to, let's say 10. You can correlate the estimates, covariance of estimates. For now, let's leave it to four as default. There is no OK button. You just press cross and the selection is saved. Now you click calculate estimates. Now here are your results. By the look of it, it looks pretty high and your chi-square is significant. So the model fit is not that good. But still, this is a high sample size. So that might be an issue. So let's look at the model fit first. Is the model fit good? Look at the C-min. This should be less than 5. So this is greater than 5. Look at the AGFI and GFI less than 0 0.90 look at the cfi less than 0 0.90 look at the tli less than 0 0.90 look at rmsea way over 0 0.08 where is your srmr so in order to run with srmr i'm going to show you that a bit later but we need to improve this model so the first step look at the estimates you click estimates and look at these standardized regression weights Anything less than 0.5? Well, this one here is slightly over 0.5. So, shall we delete it? For now, let's keep it. And if at later stage, if we need to delete it, we can delete it because it's uh, pretty low in comparison to the other loadings. So let's go to modification indices and look here, covariances, modification indices. So it's, look at this one, E11 in E12. Well, this is way over the, the 4 mark. This is 74. So let's draw a covariance between E11 and E12. Let's finish it. Let's go to our view input model. And click here. E11 and E12. Just drag the covariance from E11 and put it onto E12. Now let's rerun the model. Let's look at the output. Let's look at the model fit. Well, it did improve, but not that much. So let's go back to our estimates, rather modification indices. So E10 and E11. We cannot draw this E10 and SL. We can draw E7 and E11. Let's have a look. But for now, let's look at E10 and E11. E8 and E11. E10, 11. E8, 11. So where is E10-11 and E8-11? Let's run the model. Look at the modification indices again. But let's first look at the model fit. Well, yes, it's closing. Improved. Still quite a long way to go for AGFI. Modification indices. Look at this one. E6, E10. E5, E8. E4, E5. Let's look at E5, E8, E4, E5. Can we draw between E5, E8? No, we cannot because E5 is with SL and E8 is with FP. And the other one was, let's go back. E5, E8 cannot be done. E4, E5 can be done. E4, E5 can be done. E1, E2. Go to input. E4, E5. Let's run the model. Look at the output. Model fit. Well, yes, this has improved. Look at the modification indices. Anything that we can do? 7, 11. Let's, uh, actually, let's do it like this. Can we do E5, E8? No, we can't. Can we do E5, E11? No, we can't. E6, E10? No, we can't. Look at the bigger ones. E2, 11. E2, 10. No, not possible. E1, E2 and E1, E5 is possible. 
so let's do e1 e2 e1 e2 e1 e5 let's run the model look at this it's improving look at the output model fit here well it's approaching five this one is good now let's look at now we, we've been drawing these but it's not significantly improving your fit indexes now what we need to do now is let's go to estimates matrices standardized residual covariances now look at this here standardized residual covariances look at this two four two so sl3 is one of the indicators in servant leadership that is causing an issue so let's remove sl3 how do you remove it select this cross button and we go to sl3 and we remove it now let's run the model and see how it goes look at this look at your model fit well yes this is improved this is quite good improved this is good this is not very good look at rmsca well no this is poor let it look at the estimates again standardized regression well this is again pretty low so we can remove this as well if we want let's look at modification indices well we cannot draw any other one so i think this is quite an issue let's look at standardized residual covariances well this is sl6 still quite problematic the rest actually looks quite fine yep apart from this one so shall i delete all of them from servant leadership or we can delete from fp as well because this is a covariance so if you are deleting too many items from the single construct that might affect your validity so let's remove fp5 and let's remove sl6 fp5 and sl6 now when i run the model i'm going to get an error rather than an error it's a anomaly your model did run but look at the chi square value why because you did not fix the parameter you have to create a reference point so we deleted that indicator that had the reference point so in this case now double click on this one go to parameters and fix the parameter to one because this will serve as a reference point now run your model now you can look at your model go to model fit well this is good very close to 0.9 very good very good very good look at rmsca well this is quite poor let's look at srmr so what we do is we go to plugins and standardized rmr now what you need to do is rerun your model and look at this 0 0.03 this is very good other than rmsea all other indicators or all other indicators for model fit are good so you can say that you have got a reasonable fit for your model i hope this video would have helped you understand how to assess model fit in the next session i'm going to do another video on assessing model fit just to emphasize just to redo this stuff so that you can understand it in a more appropriate manner thank you very much